it's Petrohead. Welcome back to Automation, the car company tycoon game. Now, I have decided that um, since I didn't really get many um, suggestions for a name of this company, in fact, the only one I got was Tome Verdi, which sounds kind of sounds kind of funny when when I'm saying it out loud. So. Um, I, I decided to go with the name of Athena. Athena is the Greek goddess uh, of not only craftsmanship, she's also a protective goddess and uh, a goddess of strategy at war. So, um, like, uh, I, I did change the back of, of the cars in such a way that I uh, put these letters on here. And, uh, like, I, I think Athena is a good name for, for this company because we have, we, we want to emphasize the fact that we are, you know, um, good at craftsmanship and whatnot. And also the fact that it, she is a protective goddess will, will hint at um, the safety of these cars, which will improve in in the in the next uh, couple of years i i can assure you that but you know in the 50s it doesn't really make that much difference whether you take standard or advanced safety because what even is advanced 50s safety from today's perspective um so that is the that is the name we're gonna we're gonna be using and I think uh, since obviously as a startup company you can't you can't afford to put out a new car every year we're gonna go to 1960 and I think we go with one of these one one uh, off-road or one uh, yeah one off-road vehicle Wait, what? Oh, I can change that. How do I want it to look like that or like this? More like this, perhaps? And also straighten it out. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Again, this is going to be a luxuriously equipped vehicle. I'm not really sure like who, who's going to... Actually, this is better off-road, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not really going to... I'm not really sure who's going to buy um, a luxury off-road vehicle in 1960. Oh, wait. Look at that gap. Um, well, what if we put this bag, it's still there, right? Yeah. That's kind of... I don't like that very much. Is it also there on this one? Yeah, it is. Uh, okay, so let's go. Let's go back to a smaller one and do all the things again that we did. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. So now... Mm, this body is going to be probably a little bit tricky to work with and make it look good. And even if it doesn't look good, like th there were plenty of 1960 cars that didn't look good. We have to put some headlights here and we... Like if we put them here, that's way too low down. Or is it? Also, I don't think we can really make the same grill work that we used on the other two cars. So 
So, um, we had this one turn upside down. Uh, maybe it does work on this one. Well, if I hmm, if I work a little bit of magic here, it might work. If I surround this with one of, with one of those. This doesn't look that bad, honestly. It's not the prettiest car I've ever made, so much as for sure, but then again, like, how do you really make this, <laughs> this body look pretty? Oh yeah, I forgot one thing. And that is that you... Okay. Let's do it like this. One and two. Hmm. Rear end. So no matter what, this is going to be called the uh, 1960 UM1 because it's not the large variant, it's the medium one. It's, it's, it's actually the smaller of the two, but overall it's a medium sized one. The A is actually the 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 one and only letter that I can uh, leave under twice and not do like something like this and remove it on one side because obviously Athena starts and ends with A. Um. So next up is the T. There's the middle. That's the only problem with these lat and chrome letters. They are very hard to select once you've put them down. Um, please. Oh, okay. Mm. 
No, we need an E. Okay, um, this is the UM1. Also, one thing I don't really like is that we only have the letter and uh, the, the numbers in italic form. I'd like to just have a simple one. But, um, oh yeah, we need to only have, have them stand on one side, not on both. Now I can select the M again. Even if I click the M, it'll select the U. Um, there we go, doesn't matter. I can move you back and then... I need to get the one somehow. There we go. Okay. This is going to be a four by four. And let's make it black because why not? The exhausts are obviously going to be under this plastic bumper engine wise don't really feel the need of making anything stronger for for that for this car um, than the inline six that we have it's too big actually um, Okay, so in that case, we need a new engine family. Um, the two cars we've built so far are actually doing quite well. I would say they are, you know, not selling like, like hot cakes, but they're selling adequately anyway. And we are going to make this engine as cheap as we can. As of yet, anyway, and it's going to be a four liter. Actually, no, no, that four liter is overkill on the car. A four liter is overkill on a on a small off roader in the in the sixty in in nineteen sixty. Three point five liter. Yeah, okay, 3.5 liter pushrod V8, compact, you know. Don't really need forged conrods or pistons. Singer barrel twin carburetor seems seems okay. Because we do want to make you know some kind of power. It's it, it's not gonna be a lot of power obviously with a with a single barrel carburetor. But at least it's twin carburetors, not singles. A single exhaust is going to be good enough. Uh -huh. 
133 horsepower, pretty much. Yeah, one horsepower less than the than the inline six. More torque, obviously, but um, yeah, I think this is gonna be all right. We should we should make this as reliable as possible. Do we have any sort of valve float? No, nothing, nothing at all. Yeah, in that case, I think we're fine. Um, yeah, manual gearbox. Four speed, because why not? Top speed is going to be around here. I'm gonna give this thing a manual locker. I don't. Th I don't know if that was actually a thing, a common thing to do in the in in 1960. Probably not. Gonna give it hard long life road tires because these are still good off road. But you know this car is probably mainly gonna be used on road. One seventy five front and rear, yeah sure, why not? Actually no, let's go one sixty fives. A little bit of offset because the way it was it just looked sort of ridiculous. Um gonna go with drum brakes though, because actually solid discs might be a lot better. They're not much more expensive. We might still have some brake fade. Actually, were off-road skid trays a thing in 1960? I don't. I don't know. In any case, we are gonna have six seats in this thing. You know, a bench for three people up front, and then another one in the rear. And then a phonograph. And I think 1960 is the time to fit power steering now. And send a standard fifth. Excuse me, we're in 1960. <laughs> Why is this advanced 50s safety here? But it's okay. Um, let's go with standard, though, because again, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, both of these have low off-road capabilities, so that kind of sucks. Comfort preset is usually pretty good for off-roading. Um, that is a very weird bump graph. What if we go for this? That, that's gonna make us lose quite a lot of drivability. So I'm gonna go back to that. It only gained us 0.3 off-road. So like, it's not a big deal. Mm, that is the V8. Thirteen hundred and five kilograms, that's actually not that bad. There we go, off-road premium, family utility premium, utility, utility sport, I guess for 1960, before the muscle car era started. It wasn't that slow. 12.3 seconds is adequate, I would say. I don't think I'm gonna gear this a thing longer, or at all, you know, 158, what's the, what's the problem in that? We got a lot of wheel spin. Not much less wheel spin, but 
but more drivability because of wider rear tires. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with these though, so they so that the tires front and rear are interchangeable. In 3.5 liter um, and now we're gonna go into these tabs once again uh, we need somebody for the drivetrain automatics uh, luxury expert oh yeah we need you of course um, excuse me why don't you have a picture anymore Okay, where, where do I leave this section? Okay. Uh, reliability. Wait. How are we gonna put this in full production? Yeah, we might. More reliability this time. Because this is supposed to be, you know, competing with stuff like the Land Rover, which is, you know, a very tough car very tough car to kill um, we want you then you I think and then He's good for brakes and tires. Yeah, sure. Okay. Next up for the engine. Uh, V8 Master, sure. Adam Delaney. <laughs> At Cam Expert, we don't need you. We want you though. Um, economy Expert from Germany once again. And then. Yeah, sure. Okay. Factory tiny. Uh, I'm gonna leave this the same. This means we're producing like 5.4 cars a day. Production units infinite? Oh, okay. Oh, that was just a quick bug here. Um, so this car apparently is gonna be more expensive than the other two. Probably mostly down to the V8. I'm gonna go back here and put a number plate on the back here. It's just yeah, it looks much better now. Overall, more complete. Okay. 
Let's look at other markets actually. Gazmia, we are doing pretty well. Arhana it is doing very well too because this is a region you can think of as like a, a third world market where you know there's not really many paved roads and whatnot so you need something that's sort of capable of road and this really is and therefore this this counts as also like a normal premium, a GT car, a GT premium, muscle car even. Whereas it doesn't really do that in Gazmia, does it? Yeah, muscle, yeah, but GT, GT premium and whatnot, not really. Utility sport family, utility premium. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty content with this car. Economy is irrelevant in the 60s, like... Otherwise, muscle cars wouldn't have existed. So, uh, well, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of automation. Leave a like or a comment if you did. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.